Yes, welcome to Friday night on www.radio-op.com. Yes, it's Friday, 9 o'clock, and it's Gay Detroit Radio. Well, we've got a special week this week because we've got our very own reverend or pastor or whatever he's called. Um, He's really um, screwed up. So, <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> okay, well, you know, the, actually, let's just sort of see how it goes because there's a, a pastor in uh, Michigan and uh, he's very anti gay. And what he did was um, he put his whole picture into Grinder. That's with his face included, and a top shot with his um, physique, his torso, and um, <laughs> this is an anti-gay pastor, and he wants kisses and cuddles from men. He's actually since resigned uh, from the St. John's Lutheran Church in Midland, which is in Michigan this week. Um, after being found in the gay hookup application. Um, the pastor took an extremely hardline stance on any LGB, excuse me, I've had the nose fixed now, teeth or mark, uh, LGBT people claiming that a sexual attraction to the same sex is sinful and t- sinful temptation to be resisted and overcome by God's Grace and power. Meanwhile, he's on Grinder saying he wants kisses and cuddles from same sex men. But prior to being found out, this idiot, and that's all I can say, idiot, then tells a teenager. A gay teenager um, to kill himself. Um, according to one mother, the reverend's teachings were more than just anti-gay, and they actually encouraged her 18-year-old son to kill himself bef- because of his sexuality. Now, I don't know about you, but you know, I, all I'm hearing at the moment is all these politicians and all these pastors screaming, We are the victims! Help us! Christians! We've never been so persecuted in our lives! And yet, this asshole is telling a gay 17-year-old to commit suicide. This is a Christian pastor. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. Who the fuck do you think you are and who's the fucking victim now? Really? Uh, really? I just, I'm just so annoyed. And, you know, it's, it's like you do not have to go back to, you know, the, the the hundred years with the with the we you know with the Christian Crusades or the Catholic Crusades with the Knights of Templar terrorizing the world in the Hundred Year War, saying, "Excuse me, sir, but can we talk to you about Jesus? And if you don't believe in Jesus, we'll chop off your fucking head." <laughs> really? Now you can come now, and then we've got the KKK who actually believe it or not. This is a Christian organization. These are the victims of America right now in the U.S. of A. Christian victims. Please. The KKK itself, unofficially and rumored to be responsible for at least 40,000 lynchings in the name of Christianity when it's time for civil rights, the black civil rights, and a wonderful man called Martin Luther King was assassinated for trying to get civil rights. Sorry, but you know what? This is bullshit. I am so angry at the moment because of this man who's supposed to be a Christian 
an anti-gay pastor, and he's dipping his wick in the same pot that he thinks the devil does. <sighs> May your testicles turn square and fester. That's all I'm saying. Hmm. Moving on now. <laughs> Simon Callow, a fellow Brit, apparently is quite a homophobe. Apparently. Because pop idol winner Will Young has lashed out at his former mentor, Simon Cowell. The out singer first came to prominence in 2002 after winning the reality um, show Pop Idol, uh, on which um, Cowell was judging at the time. However, Will Young was, has no kind words for the music mogul. Ah, dear. He told the Huffington Post that he couldn't stomach conversations with the TV judge because it would be like speaking to a devout Catholic or something or someone anti-gay marriage and anti-contraception. Well, that is just so funny. I mean, there's anti-contraception. <laughs> Didn't he just give birth to or, uh, the girl he was with, this very much younger woman, give birth to an illegitimate child? Seriously? <sighs> well, actually, I'm going to sing a song. Yes, I'm going to have one of my songs. Uh, it's a gay country song, actually, and it's from years and years and years ago. I've forgotten who the original artist was, is, and uh, or was, or is, or, or could be. Um, but this is called, um, especially for uh, Simon Cowell and um, our uh, anti-gay pastor. And uh, it's a beautiful song. And it's called Don't Close Your Thighs. Um, I mean, Eyes. Um, did I just say that, or was that just a Freudian slip? I'm James D, and you're listening to Gay Detroit Radio. I know you love. a long time ago Even now in my arms You still want him I know But darling this time Let your memories die Let it be me tonight 
Nice little country song there for little Mr. Little Mr. Mm, well, really, what can I say? Uh, Mr. Cowell and um, also our Michigan Reverend. Um, his name is um, Michael uh, Michaela or Michaela, whatever. He's an asshole. Um, he's from the St. John's Lutheran Church and uh, also Mr. Simon Cowell, who's actually sort of very anti-gay, very anti-birth uh, control and oh, whatever it is or I don't know. But uh, anyway, it's called Don't Close Your th- Eyes. Uh, eyes. <sighs> anyway, so the um, St. Lutheran's Church... St. John's Lutheran's Church in Midland, Michigan, has actually um, offered a little comment. Uh, because he actually sort of did um, confirm that he did do those things. Uh, and in a post on St. John's um, website which was no longer working as of Wednesday afternoon, uh, senior pastor uh, Daniel Kempin responded to uh, Michaela's um, resignation. The full text was quoted by Gorka before the church uh, website <laughs> vanished. <laughs> Don't they realize that you're screwed? You put something online, you're screwed. No matter how many times you delete it, you're dead. Dead, dead, damn it. <laughs> okay, so the details of the sin that have been confidential are being posted online by those who seek to do harm to the Mikhail family and St. John's, the statement said. Apparently, this is referring to the queer TV story. This is taking already a difficult situation and making it even more painful. I God, I can't stand the pain. I want... And I write this to you to warn you that you may be confronted with the details of sin. Mm, Sin. Oh, excuse me. I digress. Yes, the details of sin and remind you that sin is never pretty. (laughs) Actually, I might have to disagree with that. (laughs) Oh, my God. Anyway, so... um. Kempen urged his congregation to avoid reading stories about the pastor. Now, apparently, my pronunciation of the pastor sounds like spaghetti. Well, spaghetti is always straight until heated. (laughs) You ever thought of that? Mmm... Moving on. Okay, now a bullied gay student and lel LGBT lel lel hello um not vodka please thank you uh, and LGBT activist Isaiah Smith is now suing his Texas school district. Good for him. I like that. Ah <sighs> dear. You know, it's just, I just, you know, what really gets me is like a lot of these people now, and there's so many students, um, gay students, lesbian students, and also transgender students, at a very early age, as as actually early as 13 years of age, are committing suicide because of the bad bullying. And it's not just cyberbullying. Please, you know, back when I was a child... And yes, electricity and gas and carpets were invented. You know, bullying was going on then. And you know what? The teachers turned a blind eye because they believe it's up to the parents. Well, I'm sorry. Not anymore. If you're entrusting your child to an educational system, 
then you know what? That system is responsible as long as that child is on their property. So please, I am now so angry with... Do you know, it's going to be my anger. Do you know, get me that soapbox. Because you are entrusting your child with an educational system that is supposed to look after your child. They're actually called... It's like a governmental uh, babysitter that is teaching your child. Now they're trying to say no. We are not responsible. It's the parent's responsibility. I'm sorry, but no. No, 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 no. Yes, it starts off being the parent's responsibility. But it's also the parent's responsibility to make sure that the educational system is looking after their child properly. And if they don't, guess what? Major lawsuits. So anyway, so I as Isaiah Smith was 16 when an uh, an episode of What Would You Do inspired him to petition the city council in his small conservative Keller town Keller in Texas to add LGBT protections. Uh, he would then go on to speak repeatedly at council meetings, including calling on the mayor to sign a pledge in support of marriage equality. Now, this is a 16-year-old, 16-year-old, a teenager. I would like to think that's a young adult who's now got a brain. I don't classic, legally still a minor, I think. I don't know. I really honestly don't know too much about the legalities of that. But a young adult who can be actually tried as an adult at that age, uh, but not legally um, an adult until 18. But yet you can't drink until you're 21. But yet you can go off to enlist and get yourself killed at 18. So something's wrong with that picture as well. But that's another story. Anyway, so this young guy, 16-year-old, is saying, we need help. And then he's into, the, all of a sudden, everybody starts bullying him, you know. Who the fuck do you think you are and all this. And, of course, people turn a blind eye. Ladies and gentlemen, your children are killing themselves because everybody is ignoring them. The teachers are ignoring them. The school system is ignoring them. The educational system is ignoring them. And top of it all, you cannot blame everyone but yourself. Because you also are ignoring them. <sighs> Moving on. Now... Here's a little bit of fun. Does everybody remember Larry Craig? <laughs> I got a wide stance. I can't sit down on a toilet without putting my feet on either end of a big, big tunnel or canyon. What can I say? <laughs> so there's a prostitute um, ringleader and he's claiming that the former US senator uh, spent over $20,000 a month on male escorts now my point is on this if you can afford $20,000 a month on male escorts where it's safe, it's secure, and it's not coming out until maybe 20 years later from your um, toilet digression. What the fuck are you doing in a toilet? You know, I mean, does the smell of piss turn you on as you're groping somebody's genitals? I mean, come on. Please. I just don't get this. So, apparently, <laughs> he stated... Um, because Larry Craig did state he had a white stance when going to a bathroom. 
and his foot may have touched somebody else's and that explains why he tapped on the bathroom stall and peeked through it at several times. Yeah, again, um, this white stance, um, does that make your eyes start looking under the stall, over the stall and through little sort of side gaps? Because, I mean, I, I, I'm a guy... And the girls as well. And girls actually, I mean, it really doesn't happen ma mainly with the girls because nine times out of ten, girls go to the toilet together anyway. They have a gossip, talk about their dates, their husbands, put on makeup. And I'm not being sexist here, but it's a sort of camaraderie that girls have, which actually I'm quite jealous of because I love to go to talk to somebody. And <laughs> well, I'm taking a pee. <laughs> but the thing is, you go anyway. So, but without getting graphic, I mean, if I go to the bathroom and I have to go sit down, well, usually with guys, they have to take a poop. Well, I don't know about you, but if I've got to take a poop, I really don't particularly like cracks in doors or stalls or whatever because then everybody knows what I'm doing. And I'm sorry, but. That's a rather personal thing. <sighs> Orgies are another thing, but I digress. Anyway, so <laughs> all the stupidity aside, but my thing is, if you're going to at any time spend $20,000 a month on a male escort, Jesus Christ, I I'm telling you, I mean, uh, $20,000 a month. I'm lucky I can spend twenty dollars a week. This is just not right. Let's have some music. I'm James D, and you listen to www. Dad Radio. Dad Shopee. Dad Com. And it's Gay Detroit Radio. Be right back, and uh, we're gonna have a little bit of uh, Jeff Goot and uh, bitter sweet. Bittersweet, yeah. 20 grand. And then you get screwed in the toilet. Oh, that really is bittersweet. <laughs> the beauty of a child gets tainted every day. And of all the things we love, there's that much more to hate. Broken promises are all that we can get From the politicians that allow us to live In hope, in pain, in every part of every day We drink defeat
I really do love that song. That's the wonderful sound there of Jeff Goot and uh, Bittersweet. Oh, God, you know, can you believe these politicians? I really, honestly, I'm just so really over these politicians because they've got so much hatred and, you know, so much self-righteousness and so much I am moral. No, you're not. You're a politician. You're immoral. Even worse, amoral. Because that really, you don't give a shit either way. Uh, All right. Now, here's a nice little thing. And actually, I quite agree with this. There's an LGBT monument to be dedicated at the Abraham Lincoln National Cemetery. Yeah, that's that's nice. You know, Uh, because, you know... (sighs) No matter whether you're LGBT or whatever, transgender, lesbian, God, I just, you know, it's just like the inquisitive, questioning, um, inquiring, what, you know, it's just like if you are willing to serve your country, willing to be on the side of your country and willing to protect your country, you deserve to be respected. And uh, it's just um, not right how... um, the vets have been treated and and are being treated by the country. You know, I mean, you can spend trillions of dollars or billions of dollars, but I think it's more like trillions, of, you know, sending people out to war. You can at least afford to spend billions and millions of dollars to get them the medical treatment that they need and also bury them with respect and give them the respect that they deserve. So the first monument honoring a lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender veterans in a national cemetery will be dedicated on Memorial Day at the Abraham Lincoln National Cemetery in Elwood. Sweet. Uh, The 2 p.m. Monday ceremony will be attended by veterans and former Governor Pat Quinn. Uh, The monument uh, is a result of a four-year effort headed by the Chicago chapter of the American Veterans for Equal Rights. Most importantly, this is to honor the men and women who have served this great nation. I believe that. I believe that we are a great nation. Yes, you can tell by my accent I'm an import. Well, you know what? Deal with it. I love America. America is my home. And whether you like it or not, I'm an immigrant. I got married. I got rights. I got equal rights. I got lots of rights. I'm still a human being. I'm married to a very wonderful man. And that's all there is to it. You can bitch and gripe and say that, you know, this is not right. I am not right. Jesus said this. Jesus said that. Sorry, but no. If you really must know, and this is really the gospel truth, the Bible was never written for Christians. Never. Because when the first, first, yeah, yeah, the Old Testament, I keep calling the first, the Old Testament, Christians were not even swimming around in their father's testicles. So these Christians who brought all their Bible bashing laws to America are totally in the wrong. All you bought to America is disease, pestilence, and hatred. The Bible is supposed to be a spiritual guide, not a self-righteous rule book of righteousness. It just, it just, I'm, 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 I'm just angry. I, this is my angry week. Fuck you. I mean, I don't care. <laughs> But, no, it's just, please, I am so fed up, and so is everybody. You know, um, the the, the polls for 
uh, American equality for equal rights is at the highest it's ever been. It's over 60%. And yet, the Republicans, these self-righteous Christians, this Huckabee, oh, sorry, Huckabee, then there's, um, oh, Pricky, Pricky, pr oh, no, Ricky, Pricky Santorum. There's all the others. There's Pricky Snyder. Then there's Shitty Shooty. I mean, come on. Get with the program. You are not a moralistic bloody temperature. You are not a mo moralistic barometer. You are not a moralistic guide to our country. Not a moralistic religious guide. It has nothing to do. Read the Treaty of Tripoli. Please. It, the Constitution was not based on religion. It never has been, never will be, and trust me, they never want it to be. So, moving on. Let's talk about Jane Fonda, shall we? She's actually going to be starring in um, a great movie soon, which I'll talk about more next week. But she used to think that um, Hollywood's most leading, notorious ladies' man was gay. I mean, let's face it. I mean, I'm looking at a picture right now. And um, Jane Fonda, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, she's now 77 years old. Oh, and by the way, um, we lost a great one this week, um, Lauren Bacall. God bless that woman. Beauty, beauty, beauty till the day she died. And you know what? This is going to be with uh, Jane Fonda too. Um, she sort of, um, and she's apologized. So, listen, she's apologized. Uh, but the woman is beautiful. She's going to be starring in a movie with uh, Lily Tomlin. And uh, she's also been a very long-time activist for the LGBT equality. Um, she's beautiful. Uh, comes from a very talented family. Her father, Henry Fonda. And a, a brother. Welcome to a world where moms support moms. Oh, and you know? Similac is here for you too. With nourishing formulas devoted to... Those little pop-up sites drive me nuts. Okay. So anyway, that was... Uh, <laughs> well, you can tell this is live where I'm doing this. You know, because, I mean, you know what? <sighs> anyway, so, Jay Fonda. She actually thought... That Warren Beatty was gay. Well, let's face it. He was too... You know, have you ever heard that saying, you know, too cute to be gay? Uh, too cute to be straight, sorry. Um, mm, well, maybe she was thinking, you know, about the... Uh, <laughs> tickling of the ivories in the secret code. Or it's possible that the homosexual friends that she had... Um, you know, the playwrights like William Ung and Tennessee Williams and yada, yada, yada. I mean, listen, you know, the, the one thing that's really disappointed me in many respects is Hollywood's um, attitude to gay people, gay actors and whatever. I mean, let's face it. If it wasn't for gay people, Hollywood would not exist. Really, truly. I mean, they are the backbone. I mean, come on. Ah, let's have some music. Oh, dear. I'm going to, do you know, I'm going to need a vodka. I'm getting so talked out here. So, uh, let's see. What shall we have? Have a nice little music. And uh, we'll talk later. Ladies and gentlemen, you're talk listening to Gay Detroit Radio. I'm James D. And it's www. Dot radio. Dot com. Dot com. Rambling in the back room, gambling in the smoke room. The cop is in the alleyway, they're coming up the back seat. She asked me what I want to drink. I ask you if she ever thinks. She looked at me like she knew me when she walked away. She gave a wink. I don't know your name. But please just let me in The liquor store's been closed for years I know you got better chill Ooh, what up, bum, 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 bum Mmm, let's get it up, bum, bum, bum Drink it 
from a pain can Chasing down a mailman Swing from a tree branch Swing from a ceiling fan Learn me what I never know Take me where I never go You can lead a horse to water But you can't tell them where the water flow I can't see your face But you look just like my kin This potion's got me all mixed up One more bed of cheer Walking on a sand dune, looking like a dry bruise. She says she loves my music, but I'm always singing out of tune. I'll take it as a compliment on every single continent. I can now like an alley cat, my silence is my dominant. I could never read, but baby, I can't sing. Oh, come on over to my place, for with that bear touching on. Take me down the boot camp, lick me like an old stamp, whip me back up in the shape and shake me like a leg cramp. Tell me that you wish me dead, slap me right upside the head, chew me up and spit me out, there's no one that I'd rather win. Baby, I can't lose, because I was born to win. So what if I'm an outlaw, getting rich, I'll be touching on. Yeah, I'm a bop, 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 bop. Yes, actually, the, the last song there is, uh, he's actually, I love this guy, he's called Xander, and uh, he's got t-shirts coming out now, and uh, I'm folking, as in F-O-L-K-I-N-G, I'm folking Detroit or folking Mich- Michigan. Do you know, I love this guy, he's got a great sense of humor, and also, he's got a great voice. I love his style, love his music. Yes, that's Xander, and it's called Bath Tub. <laughs> Jin. I would like to talk to him again because he's been on the show earlier, previously, earlier, whatever. But I like him. He's good. Yeah. Now, let's find out what's going on. Now, this piece of news, this is sort of the silly section. And uh, I really do like this. This Indian mother. Now, she placed an ad seeking a husband for her son. I just thought the same thing. You know what? India? What? Well, <laughs> so it is a first for India. Yes, a newspaper, excuse me, a newspaper carried a matrimonial ad seeking a same sex partner. Right, I'm hoping I can actually produce, uh, produce this, um, pronounce this right. Uh, Pad, Padma Aya is keen to see her 36 year old son, Harish, happily married. So she placed an advert in the local paper. Such matrimonial ads are placed in commonplace in India. So there's matrimonial and. Yeah. But. I actually, uh, when I was younger in England, um, in India and Pakistan, they actually do actually believe in the arranged marriage thing. And um, I was listening because I thought when I was young, I was raised Roman Catholic. And I thought, oh, that's not right. Whatever happened to, you know, freedom of choice, freedom of speech? Well, that fucking helped traditional marriage, didn't it? Mm. But I've been talking. Um, th- not always does it succeed, but it actually has a higher success rate than traditional marriage. Don't get me on traditional marriage, because that's when, in the Leviticus times, when you know um, a woman's virginity was traded for land, uh, possibly animals, or even a po- or, you know a plucked chicken. So I mean, come on! And if she you couldn't get rid of her, um, you actually sort of traded her in and put her into either being a companion for an older woman, which sort of indicated lesbianism in those days not now and then if you couldn't get a companion a paying companion that is you then got rid of her to the church so really this poor 
date. This poor daughter was like traded off for slavery. Wasn't that Exodus 21, 7, 11 or something? Um, we will teach you how to get rid of your daughter or, you know, teach her how to be a sex slave. Something like that. Um, if you actually look it up, trust me, Exodus 21, 7-11, really teaches you how to get rid of your daughter in the most nefarious ways. Anyway, back to India. So she wants to see Padma. Wants to see her son, 36 years old, Harish, happily married. So the advert read, seeking 25 to 40, well-placed, animal-loving, vegetarian groom for my son, 36, 5 foot 11, who works for NGO, uh, Cast, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, NGO Castle No Bar. Uh, I don't know what that is. It's something in, in, um, India, I presume. But um, this is a woman saying, I want a husband for my son. I've never heard of that before. But India, um, yeah, I, I mean, how progressive is that? Um, I would hate to be the son in law. <laughs> Whoa, is that one controlling bitch? I'm sorry, but I had to say it. You know, I mean, she's sh shopping for a, a husband, for a son. Jeez. Oof. You can pick your own tandoori, please. <laughs> okay, let's move on. What is next? Now, Madonna, do you know what? She's... <laughs> She's in well into her 50s, and you know what? She's been in the public eye for many, many decades. And she still manages to piss people off. Well, you know what? Good for her. Because now she's stirring controversy with a Jewish slash Muslim gay kiss photo. And you know what? Um, she did it years and years and years ago when she was sucking somebody's toe. Then it turned out to be a lesbian's toe, uh, sorry, um, um, like a lesbian sort of thing. And it was a model. And then she did this, she did that. Then she had the pointy tits. Then she had this, she had garters and got, I mean, she's gone through it all. And you know what? God bless her. She's an entertainer. And you know what? She's making money and she's doing a good job. Now, a lot of people are getting pissed off with Miley Cyrus. Well, I'm sorry. She's not 14 years old and she's no longer Hannah Montana. She's a grown woman. She likes her sexuality. And I think she's the modern day, uh, the modern day Madonna. And she's like, I mean, that cannonball thing. I thought that was a hoot. And she's turned around the thing with um, when he... Dressed up as Beetlejuice. Idiot thick. Um, yeah, you know what I mean. But, I mean, it's just like, oh, God. They're entertainers. They are supposed to shock. They are supposed to push the boat out. They are supposed to make us think and go, ew, or, or cool. So, you know, really. Anyway, so the photo uh, was taken by Tel Aviv fashion photographer, uh, I hope I say this again, Ziv Shade. And it was for an ad for a gay party called Drek uh, last summer during the bombings in Israel. You know what? This is like a new version of Romeo and Juliet. No matter how many times you're going to play that, it's like they still poison themselves. And you know what? I don't want that to happen. But no matter... How many generations you go through, no matter how many genders you go through, there's always going to be a classic Romeo and Juliet. Whether it's Romeo and Romeo, Juliet and Juliet, or Juliet, Juliet, Romeo, Romeo, all mixed up in one. I even don't know the Shakespearean version of that one. But you know what? It's love. 
And, you know, you can't tell anybody not to love somebody. This is just like it's been forever and ever. All right, let's have some music. Time for more music. Who am I going to play? You know what? Let's have some other things. I can't remember. All right. Secrets. Secret by Nikki Holland. She's a fabulous singer. Hope you like it. I'm James D. You listen to www.radio-op.com. I'm James D. And it's Gay Detroit Radio. Uh. Watch me in the corners. Corners of your eyes. You're dancing here. That's why I came. I strip you naked In these pictures in my mind My needs, my wants are hard to tame Now I want to run to you Pick you up between your thighs Just to hear you gasp And speak my name Why? Do we run? Why do we hide? Why must I be your secret? You come back to hold on you, lock me inside. Just to hear you breathing as your hips beneath me rise. Let's dance away, you never seen I want to creep in you open the depth of you inside surrounded by the musk of you and me you saturate me with the pleasure in your cries and I won't let go until you scream With all the lies If you'll say that later We can meet And I'll keep your secret From the public scornful eyes If that's what it takes to get relief Just know that one day I'll lay it out to your surprise I don't really care It's what you Perceive Why Do we run Why Do we hide Why Must I be Your secret Actually, I really do like this girl. She's wonderful. She's called Nikki Holland, and it's called Secret. Um, I've worked with her a 
a little while. She's actually um, interviewed on the show. And um, I did uh, an MC job for her as well. And she really is a very, very talented young lady. Now, we're on the last section of the show. And uh, last but not least, but they're just as stupid as the rest of the titles that I'm talking about. Now, this one, I really, really can't understand. Now, this is um, Argentina. And Argentinian judges have reduced a rapist's sentence because the six-year-old victim was gay. Now, I, 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 I'm having trouble with this, but just listen to the story. Two Argentine judges are under fire for reducing the sentence of a man convicted of raping a six-year-old child because the victim was described as being gay and had already suffered abuse at the hands of his own father and therefore had already been traumatized. I'm um I'm just totally shocked at this. I'm just totally amazed that apparently that two people who were supposed to have wonderful, wonderful schooling and education can be such stupid, arrogant assholes. Um I am just, one of the things is just saying it cannot be considered abuse where a boy is used to being abused in his home and is accustomed to sexual behavior and has had a homosexual orientation. Now, this is what gets me. This is the first time I've actually heard this by being classified as a sexual orientation this is really now uh, i am just so amazed at the stupidity i have to move on um but i will follow this case and i will definitely find out what's going on and in fact one of them says there is signs of a transvestite conduct and of conduct we had to take into account so, because you're a transvestite, or there's transsexual implications, you have no right not to be raped. I'm, 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 I'm just, um, I'm amazed, totally amazed. I just can't take that. It's just, it's ridiculous, ridiculous. Um, Ruth Bader. Ginsburg, um, she wore her black robe this this week, I should say, and uh, she actually presided over a same-sex marriage. God bless her. And she said, "This is the Constitution." Hmm. I wonder how many people read the Constitution. Well, it's certainly not Jeb Bush. Because there is no constitutional right to same-sex marriage and businesses should be able to refuse gays. Well, do you know what? I wish they would. Because all these businesses will go bankrupt within seconds. Because nobody wants an asshole to serve them. Simple as that. And last but not least, President Obama. I will never, ever stop fighting for LGBT rights. I actually sort of paraphrase that. And speaking on International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia, President Obama has said there is so much more to do. Celebrating steps in a statement released this week, the U.S. President vowed to keep on fighting for however long it takes until we are all able to live in a free and equal in dignity and rights. 
There's not much more I can say about that. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of my show this week. I really do hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you're just as pissed off as I have because, you know what? Getting pissed off apparently is better than getting pissed on. But there are websites for that too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much. And I will see you next week. I'm James D. And you're listening to Gay Detroit Radio at www.radio.com. Thank you. Good night. See you next week. Bye.